So uh, I was asked to talk about the SPF stock, a specific pathogen stock, stocks, uh, particularly for shrimp aquaculture and our experience in Saudi Arabia. Um, first thing, what is SPF? Uh, SPF means uh, stocks that are coming from a population that has tested negative for a specific pathogens, not biosecurity measures and have been fed with biosecure feeds. In order to validate this process, we need to have a surveillance program in place, both at molecular and histopathology level. While the concept is clear, the, the how to reach how to, to go through this process is still very vague. So FAO helped us to come up with a paper you can see here below, it's open access, and if anyone has difficulty, we can send it to them, to explain what is the, the, the SPF concept, the SPR and SPT, and all the, the, you know, the variables that may affect the process. Next, quickly, I want to introduce two concepts, a specific pathogen resistance and a specific pathogen tolerance. Uh, this is very important, is particularly for shrimp health management. Uh, the concepts of resistance and tolerance are different for a pathologist than for a geneticist. Geneticists look at the relation between the pathogen and the host. Uh, pathologists, we include also the effect of the environment to trigger the disease. So when we say an animal is resistant, it means the animal cannot be infected. It's refractory to infected even if we challenge it. An animal that is tolerant is an animal that can get infected, but the expression of the disease will be to a lesser extent than a susceptible one. In the case of crustaceans, this tolerance is developed through the exposure to the pathogens. And uh, the work of T Professor Tim Flegel uh, describing is this process um, is really enlightening. You can see here at the bottom, uh, access, open access to his, one of his latest publications, where he explained what he calls the accommodation hypothesis. Actually, it's not a hypothesis anymore. He has de demonstrated that, it, that is, uh, it, it is the reality. So it's a very interesting work he's doing now. So when we want to select the stocks for our farm, we need to look at three criteria. One is the health status. The animals we want to stock, are they SPF or they are infected? The genetic response of those animals to pathogens, are they highly susceptible, are they resistant, or they are tolerant? And then we can look also at productivity traits. Uh, do they have very high growth? Do they have high salinity tolerance? Do, can, they, you know, can they digest more vegetable protein, etc.? So basically it depends what are our facilities that we will select the stocks. For instance, if we have an indoor intensive system, we will want to have SPF animals, that maybe they are susceptible to pathogens, but as we are going to have them in high biosecurity, we can choose the one with the highest growth. But if we are having 10 hectare poles where we cannot exclude the pathogens, we'd rather start with clean animals, SPF, and then choose resistant or tolerant animals. But we need to remember, you know, all this, the health status and the response to pathogens is for a specific pathogens. An animal that is tolerant or is resistant to one single pathogen doesn't mean it's resistant to all. And important, you know, SPF doesn't make any reference to growth, to robustness, to inbreeding, etc. So basically why we want to use SPF? First is, you know, if we use infected brewstock, it perpetuates the diseases in ponds. And diseases in ponds for a farmer, it means, you know, our efficiency of production goes down and our production cost goes up. So it depends on the season, the production can be less predictable. So uh, biosecurity for a farmer is, is, is an economic issue. Yeah. So it's also very important, the SPF, to be able to, to the, for the breeding programs to be able to select and to have the expression of the genetic gains, removing what is the, the interaction with the pathogen. And finally, of course, uh, the market access. Now, some of the main markets for shrimp are requesting certification of their products. So uh, we have to move toward a production of pathogen-free animals. These two graphs at the bottom, it shows the impact that SPF has had. You know, in the early, in the 90s, uh, most of the brew stocks in shrimp that was used was wild animals. In 2000, uh, 
Thailand, particularly was CPF that brought in uh, SPF stocks from America. And basically that's what allowed this exponential growth of the industry. Sorry, I went too fast. In this other graph, you can see uh, this is uh, Saudi Arabia. We used to culture Indicus. We were hit by white spot and the industry collapsed. But then the introduction of this SPF, SPT, white spot SPT stock allowed the growth, exponential growth of the industry. Um, this slide, I will not go through the whole thing, but I just want to emphasize that SPF, even if it's very important, is just one more component of a whole biosecurity strategy. As I said, biosecurity is about cost-effective management, and it's something that we have to work at international, national, in, uh, and farm level. In Saudi Arabia, we are very fortunate. Uh, the government, MIWA, is very supportive on the industry. And when we uh, collapsed with this white spot uh, crisis, we implemented a national level, a series of, of measures, and another set of measures at farm level. One of them was the use of FPA. And finally, um, you know, one of the drawbacks of the SPF is people used to say the cost of the development, the cost of the maintenance. We need to look at it uh, more globally. You know, that cost of an SPF program uh, is relatively small. It's an investment, but it's a cost that is centralized. However, the economic impact of diseases is a shared cost that we divide between all farmers, but it's huge. It's much bigger than the investment of a SPF facility. So this investment is very important, and we need to look always at the staff, high technical level staff, the know-how. Right? We don't need to develop new ones, the facilities. And just to give a quick idea, the SPF, SPT program uh, we developed, this was back in 2010, we did it with Pescanova company, uh, it was close to $2 million and it lasted for a period of two years. And the maintenance of the NACWA SPF SPT stocks, we look at it in terms of kilograms of shrimp products produced. So in this case, last year, the cost of the SPF program is $0.0053, which we believe is cost effective. So. Uh, you know, the problem is when a small farm wants to make such a development, you know, is it possible to be, you know, scaling down to that level? Is it profitable? So maybe we need to enter into discussion, you know, how can we approach this from the financial point of view? You know, maybe it's a cooperative approach, maybe it's help with the government funding to launch it or, or some other ideas.